Hello everyone out there in the uh, digital community. Thank you for joining me for another video. Uh, so, Tears of the Kingdom. Basically three months away, right around the corner, coming sooner than you can expect. And with that, I'm going to try to cover a lot of Tears of the Kingdom content, a lot of Zelda content, to try to keep, um, you know, just information out there. Zelda is one of those kind of franchises that keeps my blood flowing creatively, so who knows what will come from it, and as information continues to come out from the game, we will talk more about it. But I did want to go ahead and do a real quick video for you, talking about a recent survey that's come out. This survey came out, and it doesn't really spoil anything about the story. It just kind of seems to mention features, and also seems to gauge interest as far as uh, hype, as far as what do you think about this tone, and just everything like that. So what am I talking about? Well, let's go ahead and get into it and see if we can um, maybe ascertain together what exactly it is I'm trying to get to the point of. So, here we are cutting over to the... Uh, particularly Mac screen, and I do apologize that I'm having to point at a computer screen. Um, I'm using my phone to record this video, and so I'm basically having to point at a computer screen because this computer can't handle any kind of software like that that I used to use, so it's going to have to do for now. But basically, you can see here, this is coming from NintendoEverything.com, where it's basically showing what the survey was given out. And... The very first panel basically says, please watch the following video about The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, so that we can see the recent trailer that they showed at the Direct. And it just says that it's going to be released in May, and it says it's the sequel to Breath of the Wild, and have you heard of it? Okay, so, so far nothing out of the ordinary. And here we are with the next part, where it's basically the exact same thing. Um, what do you think about this statement having watched the video? It seems like it'll be bigger than Breath of the Wild, which, of course, I do think it will be. I don't know if it's going to be better. I think that the hype and the expectations for the game may potentially be hindering it. But only time will tell on this, of course. I hope that it will be better than Breath of the Wild. That's my expectation, of course. Moving on to the next panel. It talks about some features that are going to be in the game. Um, and of course, all this is stuff that we kind of expected to have. We can collect and manage weapons um, and resources, play for hundreds of hours in order to enjoy the vast amount of content in the game, which has got me probably the most excited. Um, see how the environment reacts realistically to your actions, such as being able to make a bridge from a fallen tree. Now, I know that they just use that as an example, but I'm kind of hoping that this is the kind of thing where um, it's more grand scale. Like, rather than just, hey, you chop down a tree and it makes a bridge and it stays there, I'm talking more like if I plant a bomb um, and maybe put a hole in the ground or something as an example, that that crater stays there. Probably not what they're talking about. They're probably talking more of like Breath of the Wild where you, you could lay down a tree and it made a path or something like that. Um, Personally, I like for that kind of stuff to stay there, but, you know, we're talking limited technology here, so probably not. Uh, let's see here. Follow your own path and choose what to do next in the game. Well, I would expect that anyway, because you could kind of do that in Breath of the Wild anyway. So nothing really unique here, but unique art. And then use ancient technology to interact with the world to move objects, stop time, and create platforms. Now we have seen the stop time mechanic, and we have seen the moving mecha objects mechanic. So I assume that a lot of this is stuff that's already kind of pointing back to what they were doing, similar with Breath of the Wild. Because when I think of the whole create platforms, I'm instantly thinking of creating like the ice bridges and stuff like that, like you could with the cryosis ability in Breath of the Wild. but we haven't really seen that in the gameplay, so maybe they're talking about something new completely here. The next part of the survey is that it will include new and interesting ways to interact with the world compared to Breath of the Wild. It will have the best story or atmosphere of any game in the series. 
Now, I think that's interesting that they are really trying to point out the story and the atmosphere. The game really feels like it's trying to be, especially based upon the trailer that we saw, it really feels like it's trying to be a very grandiose story, like it's trying to be very big. And I would expect it to, the amount of time they've been putting into this game so far, the amount of years that have gone into it. Because like I said, it's using the exact same engine and basically almost the exact same Hyrule outside of some stuff that I talked about in a previous video where it's now in the air, possibly in underground. That they have focused more on the atmosphere of this game the, and ha it having a story. So kudos to that. Next part is here are some features. What are the most interesting to you? Battle against new enemy types. Well, we were kind of hoping that we'd get those battles anyway. Explore completely new areas, islands floating in the sky. So yes, obviously new areas. We wouldn't want to explore the exact same Hyrule. Build and ride new types of vehicles. So we have basically confirmed that there is now a building mechanic to this game. Almost kind of like a Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts is kind of what I'm getting the feeling of. Where you can sort of take this material and build your own vehicle almost like a connects or a Lego kind of situation and basically ride these vehicles and we saw it a little bit in the trailer where Link was riding this one vehicle so we know that that was built. Rediscover the land of Hyrule and see how old locations have changed is definitely one of the features that I'm looking forward to. I want to see how um, stuff like potentially um, I don't know Kakariko Village as an example if it's in this game um, going into or even the Great Deku Tree going into this into the sky has affected the world. Like I would love to see stuff like that. That is something I've also talked about in a previous video before. Uh, let's see here. Use new abilities and manipulate your surroundings. We that's something that's kind of a staple at this point. Uh, experience the dark and thrilling atmosphere again, pointing back to the darker theme. Almost like a Majora's Mask kind of thing. They really want you to know that it's going to be an engrossing story. And it's going to be a dark story. So I'm definitely, I'm definitely excited for that. Alright, so the next part. Do you want to discover a vast open world filled with wonder and surprise? Well, obviously, yes. I mean, who, who wouldn't? You know? Uh, next part of the survey. Do you want to experience an epic story of good versus evil in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom? You embark on a grand adventure that pits Link and Zelda. Link and Zelda. So that's kind of an important key there. So maybe you can play Zelda or maybe you kind of tag team it like I suspect where Link will take on parts of maybe the above ground and Zelda will be underground. Or you'll do puzzles together some way in tandem kind of like you did in Spirit Tracks. Um, something like that. Uh, your loyalty to each other will prevail in a story that occurs after the events of the previous game. So they are saying that we will prevail but it's kind of expected. I mean, I was kind of hoping that we would end on a dark point where there would be a third game in the trilogy, but that doesn't mean that we won't necessarily have a third game in the trilogy. I mean, let's face it. Um, the way the Breath of the Wild ended, you prevailed, but yet here we have a sequel to the game. Obviously, there's some higher, uh, more powerful entity. Possibly Ganondorf, based upon the voice of the trailer. Based upon the voice of the trailer. Still think it's Ganondorf. I don't know if it's necessarily Demise, but... Who knows, it could still be Demise that shows up at some point. Uh, and then you encounter many thrills and fears in your quest to save the land of Hyrule. Okay, cool. Do you want to unlock your creativity and imagination? In the Tears of King in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, you discover the power to solve puzzles and quests your way. Experiment with many materials, weapons, and other items that you find and collect. Some of which are unique to this game. New abilities are mastered and surround. So yes, obviously. Um... So here's another part. You can learn more about the game, learn how it compares to the previous game. So if I had to choose, I would almost want a recap of the story. Because I think they did this with Bayonetta. They gave you a recap of the other two games. I think I think they did do that with Metroid. Metroid Dread, they gave you a recap of the last four Metroid games up to that point. Um, so I'm hoping that they just kind of keep that and go, hey, just in case you didn't finish Breath of the Wild all the way, you didn't complete the story all the way, uh, here's a recap. But then the last part of this whole survey down here is something that I'm kind of hoping that they will do. So before the game's release, which of the following, if any, would you like to do? Buy or receive the expansion pack for the previous game. So just like they did with the Octopass expansion, I would like to see them throw in the DLC for Breath of the Wild into NSO. 
Um, now, that may or may not work. I think it'd be interesting. I think it'd be a way to sort of hype Breath of the Wild again prior to the release of Tears of the Kingdom. But and while that might be a good idea, I, the more I kind of think about it, the more it's kind of like, well, if you're anything like me, you kind of already bought the DLC when it came out. You know, you haven't waited all these years to now suddenly play Breath of the Wild. You played it when it first launched on the Switch. You played it and you bought the DLC the day it came out. Like, you spent hundreds of hours in Breath of the Wild, so why would you need to have the expansion pass again? But, who knows, maybe for those people that haven't, and you can get Breath of the Wild, or if you can play the expansion pass on its own, maybe for a little bit, maybe a couple of hours, as like a game trial thing, that might be interesting. And then the next part, which I also think is the last part of the survey, is before the game's release, which aspects would you like to know more about? Customization options? Definitely. Puzzles and shrines. So this basically is confirming that it looks like shrines are going to be back in the game. Again, something that we haven't exactly seen from any footage so far, so that's interesting. The environments, advanced tips and tricks, enemies, overall size of the game is what I'm most interested in. How big are we talking? We're talking about the same size as Hyrule before, but maybe now three times over due to underground and above ground? Are we talking about the same map size, a bigger map size, smaller map size? What are we talking about? Abilities, story, and characters. Now, I don't want any story spoilers, but I would love to know more about what the story is. You know, are we talking about Ganondorf? Are we talking about some other evil? What are we talking about? Beginner's Guide, how to get started, I think would be a good way to throw something in there. Almost like a little tutorial video that you can watch for the basic moves so that we can just jump straight into the game from the beginning. Quests and weapons. So definitely all of that. And so there you go. That is the survey in a nutshell. It's really very quick, very specific on some things and very vague on others. And I think that's really just from a marketing standpoint of how excited are you? What kind of stuff can we do advertising wise to uh, get you even more interested than you already are as a Zelda fan? At least that's specifically for me. Um, but what do you think about the survey? And do you think that any of the stuff that I pointed out that's very interesting about the survey uh, could potentially be spoilers? Uh, or they're just really not surprising because the Link and Zelda thing might be a spoiler, but the Shrines really isn't, not for me. Uh, I kind of expected everything that was in Breath of the Wild to still be there already, uh, but just, again, kind of folded over to where now there's an overworld on top thanks to the floating islands. Um, but that's my two cents on it. I apologize for the length of this video, guys. I hope that you have a fantastic Monday. And if I don't talk to you at all the rest of the week, I hope that you have a fantastic week. Until next time, guys, have a good one.